Friends, it is turning out to be a difficult day. I am told officially Parliament session will begin on December 7. But I find Leader of the House, Pius Goelji here, Senior Member Parliament Rajya Sabha, on the dais, Chidambaramji being there, Kartika Sharma, Mr. Sahani, and we have Chief Minister of Delhi here. Normally, I would have given precedence to judges a fraternity which I hold in high esteem, and I am part of it by being a member of the bar for long. I recognize the presence of distinguished judges, former Chief Justice, Justice Loda, and others. I'll be making a mistake, and therefore I'm not taking names of all of them, but I hope I don't miss out a single Rajya Sabha member. <laughs> that could be a little too risky. Dr. D.Y. Chandrachud, Honorable Chief Justice, Supreme Court of India. Sir, it was intellectual feast. You have traversed the issues so comprehensively, and in some sense, gave me some relief after Dr. Singhvi said, I have tough times ahead. <laughs> Dr. Singhvi, a distinguished senior advocate, a very senior member of Rajya Sabha, and a family member of Dr. L.M. Singhvi family. Professor Dr. C. Rajkumar, Vice Chancellor O.P. Jindal Global University. I have known him recently. I have known of him much earlier. A man who knows how to create institutions spinally. Sri Avishkar Singhvi, I indicated to Dr. Abhishek Singhvi, time for him to pass on the button to him. And mind you, in doing so, I might have taken some risk, he indicated, after December 7. <laughs> but this should happen in seamless, natural course. Family members of Dr. Singhvi are present here. They will bear me out. Some kind words have been used by Dr. Singhvi about me. I'm so glad my wife is not here. And Chief Justice Loda knows she is irrepressible when it comes to truth. <laughs> I therefore was very cautious during three years as Governor of the State of West Bengal that she does not attend a single assembly session. I never thought I will have this great occasion. There can't be a greater privilege to be associated in some manner with the name of Dr. Alam Singhvi, whom I had the occasion to know personally and benefit out of that relationship. I shared it with the Attorney General when we were together a while ago at Uprashtapati Nivas. And he was a little surprised that I knew the man so intimately for decades. Grateful to Singhvi Endowment and OP Jindal Global University for making me part of 8th LM Singhvi Memorial Lecture. The Chancellor Navin Jindal is also here. Grateful to you. I appreciate the well thought out theme of the Memorial Lecture, Universal Adult Franchise translating India's political transformation into a social transformation. Since I have been part of governance for the last three years, in some measure, 
I might not be in a position to take down all that has been reflected so far. I have seen it in practical terms because we are the world's most vibrant democracy that is representative, I would say, to an ideal level. And I'm sure no one here will disagree with that thought process. We started with the Constituent Assembly. The members were enormously talented. They were drawn from all segments of society. But progressively with each election, our parliament reflects authentically the mandate of the people, wisdom of the people. And now, what we have in parliament is fairly representative. And I can indicate to you without fear of contradiction, at a global level, we do not have a parallel on that count. <laughs> to reflect initially about Padam Bhushan, Dr. Lakshmi Mal Singhvi, he was a very different kind of a man. But I have something in common with him. He was elected to the third Lok Sabha from Jodhpur, 1962 to 67. I was elected to the ninth Lok Sabha from Rajasthan, Jhunjhunu. But where we slightly parted ways was that in 67 he became an ex MP. In 92 I became an ex MP because our term did not complete. Then Dr. Singhvi continued with his pursuit of serving the society at large, but got an occasion to be in parliament after 30 years. Just imagine, I have been his eclave. To follow in his footsteps, I waited for 30 years. <laughs> and would land in Rajya Sabha, in parliament, after three decades. Dr. L.M. Singhvi, unlike the tribe of senior advocates, I'm not one at the moment. I ceased to be one on 30th of July 2019 when I took oath of the Office of Governor of West Bengal. So I parted company with a jealous mistress. Trust me, till that time, I pondered the jealous mistress to the best of my ability. I am yet to see a system where we have human beings enormously talented. They will project sublime concepts of transparency, accountability. But when it comes to dictating their own actions on a global horizon, they may constitute a people have to be honest to themselves, a most exploitative tribe. We are before the man, Chief Justice of India, who will take the institution to greater heights. And 1.4 billion people look up to him, including those who are in parliament. Sir, Monday and Friday, the spectacle is bewildering. And that is something we need to think about. During my brief tenure as vice president of the country, I have been abroad twice. And you cannot imagine the kind of respect India has. We are, as a nation, on the rise as never before. And our rise is unstoppable. <laughs> no one in the world discounts it, except some of us. To give real meaning to the sublimity of our elected verdict, we all will have to rise to a level where partisan prism 
should not be there when the interest of the nation is at heart. I will give you a few illustrations which I had the occasion to share with the world leaders. Can you find any other country in the world which has handled COVID the way we have done? 1.4 billion people, dose one, dose two, and booster. It will take beyond 2.5 billion. And all recorded digitally and made available. A situation that doesn't obtain in the West. We have done it. Reflect back, could there have been more man-made problems? Could there have been greater difficulty than that was generated? The kind of ecosystem that was sought to be evolved. We don't look back, we need to analyze. When it comes to tackling a pandemic, national interest must always prevail. As governor of the state of West Bengal, I know, when pandi pandemic was there, there was a real issue to make available food to the needy. 800 million in this country, 800 million. Many countries in the world are unable to digest this figure. Were made available, cereal, rice, pulse, from 1st April 2020, and it continues. And this doesn't end here. If we are talking of the subject at issue, social transform transformation brought about political transformation. Imagine the kind of inclusive growth we have had. I know, as a lawyer, I went to a bank to get a loan of rupees 6,000. Bank of Baroda. I wanted to create a library of my own. I was ever beholden to the manager who gave me 6,000 rupees loan without a security. And look at where we are. We have developed an ecosystem by affirmative governance steps that every individual is in a position to fully exploit his or her talent. And that is why the number of startups we have is unknown to the world as such. In the first half of 2022, the number of unicorns we have, and for more than a billion fiscal dimension, is unrivaled in the world. We are ahead of China. And therefore, Indian democracy will continue to be vibrant. But when it comes to the issues that directly concern India, we must rise to the occasion and keep only one thing in mind, interest of Bharat. <laughs> the Honorable Chief Justice reflected, and it is indicated in the preamble of our Constitution, we the people. That means the power resides in the people. Their mandate, their wisdom, Imagine a situation where Indian parliament reflected the mindset of the people. Indian parliament in 2015-16 was dealing with a constitutional amendment act. And as a matter of record, the entire Lok Sabha voted unanimously. There was no abstention in Lok Sabha. There was no dissension, and that amendment act was passed. In Rajya Sabha, it was unanimous. There was one abstention, no opposition. So we, the people, their ordainment was converted into a constitutional provision. The power of the people came to be reflected 
through most sanctified mechanism on a legitimate platform through applicable mechanism. That power was undone. The world does not know of any such instance. I appeal to the people here, they constitute judicial elite class, thinking minds, intellectuals, please find out a peril in the world where a constitutional provision can be undone. Our Indian constitution provides in explicit, explicit terms, Article 145.3, interpretation of the Constitution when a substantive question of law is involved can be undertaken by the court. Nowhere it says a provision can be run down. Look at it from another perspective. If a constitutional provision that carries the ordainment of the people at large in such a vibrant democracy is undone, what will happen? I'm appealing to everyone that these are the issues that must not be viewed on partisan lines. I expect everyone to rise to the occasion and to be part of the growth story that is India at the moment. We have a platform where all issues can be debated, traversed. But what I'm started, and senior members are present here, after this verdict, there was no whisper in the parliament. It was taken as such. This is too serious an issue. We are proud of our judiciary. It has contributed hugely to the growth of promoting the rights of the people. Innovative mechanism was taken recourse to in 80s, where a postcard could galvanize a judicial action. But I pose a question to myself. After 9-11, US had the Patriot Act. That Patriot Act was passed both by the Congress and Senate but not with this majority. There was a position in the Congress, there was a position in the Senate. Senate was by and large unanimous, but there were two senators who opposed. And it went through. Examine the provisions of Patriot Act, and I appeal to every legal mind, and you'll find how discriminatory it is but it emanated from a source that was taken as not beyond reach of any other authority. And that is why primacy of national interest prevails. I am not trying to say something which is not known to us, but time has come when we are talking what is the impact of political transformation, on social transformation. Honorable, the Chief Justice was reflecting part nine of the Constitution. A new part was there. We had Panchayati Raj from 1952. But to give it a constitutional status, to make it a government of a local nature, a structure was given on the level of parliament and legislature. A separate state finance commission was given that would engage into devolution of funds between state and panchayats on the same pattern as the national finance commission that does between the union and the states. Similar situation was created by way of part nine capital A for municipalities. Imagine if these were to be undone, what will happen? Most recently we have had this kind of governance with the co cooperative sector, part nine capital B. Now friends, I put it to you. 
the basic of the basic structure is primacy of the will of the people. In democracy or in any governance, there can be nothing more basic than prevalence of the rights of the people. And that prevalence has to be adjusted on fundamental parameters, that is, the ordainment of the people must be reflected through legitimized mechanism, which is through legislature, in a sanctified manner, which means it must be debated, discussed, and passed. If that takes a shape, and then we have this kind of scenario, I'm sure it is never too late to reflect and think. Our judiciary, being one of the critical institutions of governance, along with executive and legislature, the doctrine of separation of powers is fundamental to our governance. The harmonious working, working in tandem and togetherness of these institutions is vital for growth of democracy. Any incursion, however subtle, in the domain of the other by one has the capacity and potential to unsettle the apple cart of governance. I therefore avail the opportunity in the name of Dr. Alam Singhvi, who always believed and propounded rule of law, should be a guiding factor in all our actions. Sometimes, it takes something different to speak out a mind. I have high regard for Dr. Singhvi. But imagine he feels I'll have a tough time on 7th December and onwards. This perception itself is a very, very dangerous perception. We will have to have an open mind. We must believe in sublimity and efficacy of our institutions. I have engaged in extensive discussion with all the members of parliament. Some of them who are present here could not make it. I will have outies to them. I know they are very distinguished, talented, enormously talented. But it is only interaction that alone can define our way forward stance. I have chosen to deviate from the script for the reason that some reflections have come to be made. Look around the world during COVID, robust health infrastructure of Manhattan collapsed. We had the spectacle of people dying in corridors of London hospitals. The powerful economies of the world, be it Germany, France, or Italy, the first two being very powerful economically, had no answer to it. We battled. We battled with innovation. We battled with synergizing various agencies. We came out of it. But during that time, there was intervention intervention at all levels. That intervention was not there in any other theater of the world. When the scenario in the West was much worse, and they claimed to the entire world, we have robust health, health infrastructure. People were paying for it. It collapsed. I therefore beseech that every institution has a role in making what we in India are today. Every institution has a well-defined role. Legislature has a defined role, so is the executive, so is the legislature. And all are subject to the ultimate ordinament of the people. And there is only one mechanism for that, the parliament. I'm venturing out, I know, in a terrain which may call for 
immediate reaction because we are in tough times. For drop of a hat, the other point of view is indigestible. I have worked in my earlier office 100% in constitutional groove. I am under oath. Under no circumstances, I will do otherwise. But all of us have to keep in mind that if lack of courage and conviction and they contribute to failure of duty or dilution of duty, then we are not serving the nation as expected by the Constitution. Why I am saying so? I have noticed, and after extensive interaction, helplessness of the honorable members. They're enormously talented. <clears throat> they have discussed with me, deliberated with me, and they say, we can't assure you. On the floor of the house, we'll have to dictate our actions as directed, as indicated. Now, if that is to happen at the cost of the nation, then where we are? I wouldn't take more time. I would only say that we are a country on the rise. Our social parameters are ascending like a plateau. <coughs> When I was a member of parliament in 1989, a power in my hand was 50 gas connections. And that was a power I used to flaunt. Imagine 90 million or 100 million or 180 million, as the people may like to call, those connections were given free to needy households. Any government that has to deliver as per aspiration of the people is bound to do it. Therefore, to introduce politics when it comes to constitutional offices is unfortunate. I would come towards the end by sharing my great pain. We are a different country. Till I ceased to be a senior advocate on 30th of July 2019 when I took my oath and parted company. I had to suffer situations. People were just not cognizant that I became a senior within 11 years of my practice. I was trying to find bearings and place in indigestible system. Lived through the corridors and mind you, with a background in academics of which I can be ever proud. Why I say so? We generate economic status by hard work, but we generate iconic status in our country on baffling parameters. Our parameters will surprise us, and those parameters often are activated by event management. Time has come when the true talent of this country and ethos of this country need to be recognized. I can assure you the tide is unstoppable. It shall happen. We have a parliament which is far more representative at the moment. And we have seen the changing profile of industry and economics. And those who have made entry into economics, industry, and commerce on the strength of their idea and innovation are marching ahead of those established leaders in economy. And that is why today we can take pride that there is hardly a global entity of repute that does not have presence of Indian homogeneous. Friends, <coughs> 
I am leaving you with one thought. What I have traversed was in a compulsive situation. I am sure you will bestow your earnest, objective, considered attention to this. And as true citizens of this country, generate a public opinion that political stance should be distanced from sublimity of our constitutional functioning. It is never too late to make a different way of life available to us. The basic structure doctrine, we have lived with it. We have taken it as such. It was by a majority of seven is to six. It was given to us in a morbid form. It came to be developed from time to time. His indicators were given. But as a student of law, as a modest student of law, can parliamentary sovereignty be ever compromised? Can a succeeding parliament be bound by what has been done by earlier parliament? And that, I'm sure, is a thought you all will best to attention to. I'm grateful to the opportunity that has been made available to me by these two significant outfits. And I'm sure I would not have ventured to express my thoughts, but for the great respect I have for Dr. Alam Singhvi. I conclude by saying, as a lawyer unknown to Dr. Singhvi, I was grappling with an incident that happened in Rajasthan, which became subject matter of litigation. And that was in the making of a film, Deceivers. As you all are aware, under the Cinematograph Act, if certification is given, that affords you immunity from prosecution as regards contents of that film. What happens if an action is challenged before certification, during the making of the movie? So I was stuck up in court. And that was the situation after the Supreme Court had taken a view in the case of Satyam Siyam Sundaram. The certification affords you, that was on a review, a case had come from Indore, another from Delhi. In one case, they said no. But in the second case, the same bench said yes, immunity is afforded from criminal prosecution because you are possessed of a certification from the cinematograph board. I came to Dr. Singhvi. I thought he was the only one who can throw some light. I met him. The client was persuading Dr. Singhvi to appear himself. As a matter of fact, Dr. Singhvi had undertaken to the client, and the client was known to Dr. Singhvi for a long time. After hearing me, Dr. Singhvi made me write my submissions, but said he will not appear. I thereafter had the occasion to be in court where he was assisting the court on one side, I was assisting the other side. Since that man could be so indulgent to a man from the village, and that is why Atal Bihari Vajpayee, a prime minister of this country known to all in the world, called him Saraswati Putra. Lakshmi Mal Singhvi had all the indulgence of Lakshmi. He was called Saraswati Putra. Current Prime Minister has called me Kisan Putra. So as Kisan Putra, I pick up the courage to appeal to all of you in the name of the people of this country that it is high time we scratch our brains, use all our institutions so that they work in synergy, in harmony, in tandem, in togetherness 
to serve the people of this great country that is on way to rise, and the rise is unstoppable. Thank you so much. Thank you for your insightful words, sir.